Hey, and welcome back to my channel. If you are not subscribed, subscribe to Clueless Vibes. We are happy to be here. Um, and it's kind of like a learning channel. So I am trying this whole YouTube out and I hope you guys enjoy it. This video is about why I stopped selling clothes for our boutique, um, which was Victoria's Vibe. And it was a lot of fun as a boutique owner. I learned a lot via LuLaRoe. So if you don't know, before owning my own boutique, I was a retailer with LuLaRoe. And I had like good experiences with LuLaRoe, nothing bad, but my husband and I always had an end goal of leaving. It was because it was something that we never owned ourselves um, and they had total control. So Seth was always like, we have to figure out an end game what is this going to be and how are we going to pivot this to something else? And when we saw retailers like leaving in masses, we were like, you know what? We should start heading out of this before like something sparks. And then I just get left with a bunch of inventory. And thankfully I was able to sell off all the inventory, which is really good. And, um, we never lost money with LuLaRoe, which is another big thing. Um, and that's actually how I began budgeting was because of the money I was making with LuLaRoe. I got my husband involved and I was like, Hey, this is how much money is coming in. How do I put this towards taxes, ourselves and inventory? And we were able to figure that out. And, um, through LuLaRoe and like with my husband's job, we became debt free. And so a lot of good things had come from it. And then we pivoted it to having our own boutique. Now, owning your boutique is harder than you think it is. Like, yes, you love all the clothes and oh my gosh, it's so much fun, those things. But like doing your own taxes, not as fun. And what else? And then like just learning, <laughs> I would say just learning. So with doing your own taxes, you have to find all these different vendors yourself. And then you have to figure out markup. So markup at the beginning, I was just doing two times wholesale, which was like great for like everybody, but I wasn't making any money. So you got to take into account PayPal fees, visa fees, all these little fees, website fees, um, packaging, buying materials and all that good stuff. And not saying you didn't have to do some of that with LuRel, but you are more hands-on. So you have to have your website, you have to buy your domain, you have to um, buy a sales permit, and then you have to get registered with California. I was registered as a corporation. And then you have to find different vendors and see what their requirements are. So the that's a difference. That's a big thing. It's like with being your own boutique, um, certain shops have cute things, right? We like a shirt from a certain shop, but that shop may have a hundred dollar minimum, meaning you'd have to buy like two or more product from them. And that's the hard part because sometimes you don't like multiple things from that shop. So sometimes I'd be sacrificing to get that item or you are paying for shipping. And I live in San Diego and I was so nervous to go to LA for the first time to go shopping, but I wish I had gone sooner. So uh, one of the main things I would say is money wise was a reason I stopped selling was just because I was realizing that for how much time I was putting into the boutique, I wasn't getting much back in rewards. And not to say like that's like super bad but it just wasn't what I was hoping for so like there would be weeks when sometimes I wouldn't sell much and like it's hard when that happens because you're like what am I doing this for but lives were super fun like doing Facebook lives and like seeing people was really cool but when you don't sell clothes like in a week you're showing that clothes the next week and then you become demotivated um so I would say like the, what is it called? I'm trying to think of the quote, but comparison is like the thief of joy. And I would say that's a hundred percent true because I would see other boutiques and I'd be like, dude, they're killing it. But really you have like no idea what is going on with that boutique, like, and how long they've been in business and what they do and how many hours that they're working. And I, granted, I would work some hours, but when I started the boutique, I had Luke and I, 
for the first two years of his life was like a full-time stay-at-home mom and um with the business and i didn't want to sacrifice a lot of the time while he was awake with running the business and that was like my personal thing that i wanted i mean that's why I, that's why i did the business was to be home with him so another thing is time it's just i didn't have the time to put into it that i wanted because I wanted to be more successful than it was. And in order for it to be more successful, I had to put more time and effort into it. And it wasn't a sacrifice that I was willing to do with our kids. And I say that because towards the end of the boutique, I became pregnant with Han, our second born. And I we decided to sell our house. So with selling the house, we had to move somewhere. And we moved with my mother-in-law because we couldn't find a place right away. And some places were not taking contingent offers on the sale of your house. So I didn't have a place for my um, clothing at her house. And I didn't want to like do Facebook Lives at her house. Like it just felt funky, you know? So that was another reason is just like I didn't have the a place to store them and going live at somebody else's house is kind of funky, you know? And then it would be around his bedtime and we didn't have like, I didn't want to take up her living room to do a Facebook live like that. I don't want to make somebody out of the place at their own house. So that was another thing. Granted, knowing what I know now, I probably could have took a break from the boutique and just said, you know, in a few months we'll resume it. I saw one of my friends um, do that with her, like, accessory shop and it went really well for her and you know I got to like when I decided to like just pause and take a break I realized that it kind of just wasn't for me like it was a stage of life for me but it wasn't like what I really wanted to go through all the way so another quote that comes to mind is doubt um crushes more dreams than failure does and that's a hundred percent too because I would doubt myself all the time. I'd be like shopping and I'd be like, oh, is this cute enough? Like, should I get this? Or what is it called? I don't know about the price. I feel like this price is going to be too much. I don't think they're going to pay it. And you know what? That ended up hurting me more because I would second guess myself. And it's like, why? So doubt is another reason. But you know what? Knowing everything that I went through, I'm glad I experienced owning your boutique because I know it's not for me, especially after the Lorel. I just knew like my time with clothing had been done. I saw how much storage the clothing took at, um, with Lorel and it was just too much. I felt like I would look back at photos inside my house and I was like, what was I thinking? Like, this is so many clothes in my house. And it just like, Ugh, that part like still like triggers me in my head. I mean, granted, we did we were successful with Bluerell, but just like knowing all those clothes were in my house was like it was worrisome. So I don't want I didn't want to do that again. And so how is my place gonna be successful if I didn't have all the clothes, you know? So I was a little traumatized. And um, what else? I would say like those are the main reasons why I stopped it. It was just mainly doubt of doing it myself. The money wasn't coming as the outcome that I wanted it to be. And I just wasn't having fun anymore. Granted, I did think a few months ago, I was like, oh, what if we did it again, Seth? Like, what if we started a boutique again? And then he was like, I don't know. But I was getting excited because I was like, you know, I saw these pictures of myself doing the boutique and how like I would get dressed up and do the photo shoots and how fun they were. But then I think back and I think, okay, so if I do it again, I have to leave here, San Diego, to go spend basically like a whole day in LA and do the shopping and stuff like that. And then sometimes if items don't sell, I got to figure out how are we going to make this product move? And sustainability was was getting to me too because I was like, dude, this is like fast fashion. Although granted, the shirts did last some time, but then... I like how long are people going to wear this stuff for? I don't want it to just end up in waste again or be sent to Goodwill in like a few months. Like I wanted to do something good for our planet and I just felt like the boutique wasn't fulfilling that. So that's another reason that like was really kind of just like 
I would always think about the negatives. And that's the sad part is I thought about the negatives a lot with the business than more of the positives. Um, but I'm really glad I did it. And I am happy at what it's provided for us. Uh, and I don't know if I'll go back to it. But right now I'm trying this YouTube thing out. So if you like this video, subscribe. <laughs> Tell your friends about it. And then our next video is going to be how we budget. Because um, with the clothing we were able to get become debt free and now we budget and we tell our money where to go and it's helped us so much and i just want to help other people